Matty Healy, 1975, 1 minus 9 equals negative 8, plus 7 equals negative... Wait, hold on. (laughs) Brunch! Hit it, boys! I've realized there there are people that everybody dunks on, specifically on Twitter or whatever, people who talk during movies, people who don't who do return the shopping carts, don't return the shopping carts, people who are children, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I realized yesterday one of these groups of people are absolutely unfairly maligned. Got a tweet here from a guy named uh Kyle Van. Uh, Noy Noy. Mm -hmm. at KVNO3 on Twitter. Another day, another plane ride with people that get up for no reason when the plane gets to the gate. We should find them. No standing in the middle after the plane lands. I thought about it for a little bit. I this this Twitter user. I'm I'm no fan of this Twitter user. Okay, and I was like, all right. So I need to disagree with this guy for some reason, and. (laughs) We are way, way, way too hard on people who get up, especially if they're tall. Mm. So I texted some tall people. I said, are you tall? They said, yes. I said, do you stand up when a plane lands? And some of the reaction I got was like, well, I know that it's a little taboo or whatever, but I got to stretch the legs. If it's a comfort thing, fuck you. Who is this Twitter user to be super mean to somebody who's uncomfortable on a plane? Uh, I mean, I famously don't care about tall people, and I don't think that they deserve to have rights. Um, but so, like, the, the plane thing just bothers me in terms of, like, cutting. Cutting and holding up other people. Yeah. So that's where you're kind of getting into some gray area. But, like, if you just want to, like, get up and stand in the aisle and just, like, like stretch your legs a little bit. I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know. Like there's so many things with like plane behavior that make people freak out. And obviously the big one is, Oh, can I recline my seat? And blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's, it's fine. It's whatever. Do, do whatever you want to do. But like, you have to know that people are very sensitive when it comes to any sort of behavior on planes. I never realized you're not inconvenienced by anything on the plane. No. Because you're I'm small. You're a small person. Yeah. This is a M-S-M-O-L. massive advantage. M-O-L. You are a small boy. So if somebody reclines, I, I try to stay away from in the I am very outspoken against people who recline on planes because I think that it is a very unless you are a tall person, I think it is a very easy way to show how considerate you are. Of your fellow man, especially when it's somebody that you don't know. The whole thing of like, you press this button, two things happen. Uh, you seen this movie? No. James Marsden's in it. Okay, no. You ever seen this movie? No. You don't know what I'm going to say? No. You press the button, two things happen. You get a million dollars. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, the box. Someone you don't know dies. Yeah. And then at the end, what happens? They come to take the box. And you say, hey, what's what, we're, what's happening with this box? We're going to give it to someone you don't know. Ooh, Mm -hmm. shit. You're going to die. Yeah. But I Uh, think that's... Yeah, but I mean, like, the the, the reward... I don't want to do the whole, like, reclining conversation. But, like, the reward of reclining on a plane is just not fucking worth it. Mm -hmm. It's, like, it's a 2% increase in comfort. Do you think that... Do you agree that people who stand up, it's fine? Who fucking cares? Leave them alone? Yeah. All right, Kyle Van Noy. Yeah. Don't be rude. Listeners, let us know on Instagram or on Twitter. Our Instagram account. Popping off. Popping off. Flowing. Uh, The kind folks from Air sent over some uh, nice pictures from the movie Air. Mm -hmm. One of them could not be more of a meme template. It's Ben Affleck crouching over Viola Davis telling her something. That's going to be the new guy in the club. What's that? Uh, it's my uh, mic malfunctioning, but we are absolutely going to be running that into the ground. So prepare yourself. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash listen to brunch. Also on Patreon, Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Uh, and I don't know. What else do we have to plug? I don't think we have anything else to plug. Just those things. I'm yeah. playing through so much pain. My, my cold is well gone, but my allergies Same. are so fucking bad that I'm trying to give myself more shit to do. 
because I thought this would work. It's not like, uh, yesterday I did some stuff with the revs. I did, uh, some stuff with you and the only time during the day that I wasn't grabbing my face was during those times because I was distracted by it. So I intentionally, I was like, all right, I'm going to stream myself watching hockey. And that didn't work. After like an hour, I was like, fuck it. No, I got to grab my face and just. You die. are like, you are, uh, I, I will say you do not smell. There's no sick smell coming off of you, but you are like uncomfortably allergic right now. It is the worst. And God <laughs> fucked with me for like four years. He made me so I didn't have allergies anymore. Mm -hmm. I like the last however many springs or not it started up again a few years ago, but for maybe five, six years, these terrible seasonal allergies that I have had gone away and now they are back in full force, making up for lost time. Mm -hmm. And I am in hell. I can't go outside. I can't do fucking, I can't open up windows. It is so terrible and miserable. Also, do cars smell this time of year? Uh, what do you mean? Because like, I'm noticing this, and my I think it's smelling, but when I start up my car, maybe it's because I have a cheap car or something, when the air comes on, that smells bad, and I can't tell if, is that like a pollen thing or what? I have no idea what that is, but I, I do know, I, I'm aware of like what, uh, what you're talking about, where it's Fucking like- Fucking kill little, me. I, I think there might be something dead in your car. It's me. Yeah, that's It's all fair. bad. I hate it so fucking much. Um- so the uh, the NHL draft lottery was this week, and it killed me because we uh, we taped a thing that uh, we are, are we talked about it. We're we're working on this hockey thing, and we taped a, a little test run, and we talked about Connor Bedard, and we talked about like how he's absolutely going to the Chicago Blackhawks. Nailed it! Can't wait to share. With people. <laughs> yeah, and it pained me so much that we could not like release the demon from uh, from its cage after that happened last night just the most predictable thing in the world that that Connor Bedard actually you were like you were banging the drum on Connor Bedard uh, I was wanted gonna, the ducks you but wanted I was the ducks. even I was saying it's gonna be the ducks yeah right I, I was like he's gonna go to the Blackhawks it's gonna yeah. be uh, a nightmare and just so perfect that uh that he ended up going to the Blackhawks and that they chunked the presentation of the draft lottery so that everybody had to be like this is rigged, both from a result standpoint and a presentation standpoint. They both leaned into it being rigged. Yeah. I just don't like that Connor Bedard's name is Connor. Get your own name, man. That's true. Yeah, we, we've got enough of uh, enough of Connors. Chicago got a, a Leon in the pipeline. They took third <laughs> overall last year or something like that. Yeah, I believe so. You know who doesn't get enough credit? What? Uh, Peter Shirelli. Mm. The one guy he didn't trade was Leon Dreisaitl. Sure, but he also traded for some guys that he shouldn't have i will he, say the the taylor hall thing in hindsight fucking fine taylor hall for adam larson straight up no fine no you kind you, you lost the trade but like how much not is one for it? not one for one yeah it's, no you should should have gotten more and like again like you lost straight but like that was not the debilitating trade that everybody thought it was if they kept if they kept uh taylor hall and didn't sign milan lucic it would all be kind of the fucking same no, it wouldn't. It's it's it, the 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 trade was it, like a, a problem, but it was compounded by the fact that like the the Devils didn't do anything with Taylor Hall. He won right. an MVP with them, and like they had no team around him. Most so. random MVP. Yes, in the world. Uh, yeah, for sure. Just like winger who. <laughs> Like, could have been the man, but just never really was the man. He was the man that year. He he smoked everybody on that team by, like, 40 points. On that's, his own team? Yes. Yeah, well. As a winger, that's really impressive. As you a can Devils do, player, though. Yeah, but you can do that as a center way easier than you can as a winger. Uh, he had, he smoked everybody, like, by 40 points. And then in the playoffs, he had a couple good games or like one or two good games, and those are the only games that they won in that first round, and they got smoked in every other game. Like, he was the entire team. Uh, I'm out on first overall wings. Speaking of... Do Rick Nash on your own time. <laughs> uh, speaking of being out on things, we got to talk about Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, my God. I caught up just because of that one clip that was so bad. It is now... It's Sesame Street. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the show is dude. fucking Sesame Street. I... Uh, it really, really takes a lot for me to be like, this thing has gone woke. Too woke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like Ted Lasso has always been quote unquote woke. And like when I use the word woke, whenever we use the word woke, we're like using it as 
the bastardized version of what it's become. Yeah, but in the early days of woke, I remember we were like we talked on about, board. We were like we talked about what it was. We should be woke. That sounds awesome. Yeah, right. Because it was like the original meaning of woke before it became like the white people's way of like volunteering their racism. You're right. Uh, but no, yeah, like, this Ted Lasso is just like if you don't want to use the word woke, it is so fucking preachy. And it has become like every every episode, the writing is so bad, the dialogue is so bad, and like it's like every te- Ted Lasso started off really nice, where it had like nice messages in every episode, and it was like delivered in a way that was like, hey, it was pr- kind of subtle, and the writing was good. You were interested in the storylines, yeah, and they handed them to you, and like, hey, isn't this a nice message? Now it's like they're. Every episode is a PSA for something, right. and they are just going about it in the preachiest, most uninteresting way possible. I saw it coming a mile away. I said it at the time. You did, and I didn't. I didn't think it. The show was going to get much worse, though. I just thought that it was going to be a Modern Family thing, where it comes out, everyone loves it, and then in two years, we know how this works. Happened with La La Land in the span of like two months, where it was like, let me guess, you think that Ted Lasso hits you in the feels? What a loser. Like People were going to turn on Ted Lasso and be horrible. I didn't think, though, that a show that was good, not great, getting a, getting worse would make such a difference. Like, yeah. like Ted Lasso, I thought. Well, I, I, I mean, it's not like it got a little bit worse. That's It a, fell off a fucking cliff, dude. And I guess that's what I wasn't considering. I was like, it's probably going to get a little worse over time. But I didn't think that it was going to go from good, not great, easy to overrate bars uh two holy fuck like who made this yeah. famously i tweeted last week wait what how long ago did the writers go on strike because yeah, the scene right. where sam is explaining uh at the end because nudes uh, this may contain spoilers mm-hmm. uh now you've uh, probably seen it on twitter nudes by now. leak yeah and it's uh, the fappening they, yeah. did, they do the fappening storyline like three years like five years after the fappening was a thing. That's okay. Verizon just found out about not to brag. So <laughs> Oh, that's right. They're oh, good. The Seth Meyers commercial. What the fuck? I've is almost that? sent a hundred tweets about that. Like they they're doing <laughs> Humble not brag. to brag in 2023, which like I do not to brag in 2023, but I do it as like part of like yeah, a like multifaceted a mock- thing. And like mocking, like n- like not to brag. Right. Or just be like, n- not to brag, I'm eating too much or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then like I move on with my day. They <laughs> built their whole fucking thing about like not to brag. Uh, Sounds like you are bragging, bro. <laughs> that guy's bragging. I'm not bragging. <laughs> hey, Verizon, mom, Verizon not to brag. Verizon is on an unforgivable run of commercials where they're, they're sullying the name of fucking. It's uh, always XSNL people. Not uh, not Paul Giamatti. They've, He's hosted. <laughs> yeah, they've uh, they've sullied the name of of Paul Giamatti. Uh, they're they're running not to brag into the ground, and also like commercials are in a bad place right now. The they Peter are Peter Davidson is driving me. It, it, this happens every year though, like during the the playoffs Whoa, where they why? run the first three commercial the three commercials over and over and over again. Low key, Peter Davidson could get it though. Fuck off, Peter Davidson. Like I, I like Peter Davidson's look. He looks the same. He's just wearing glasses. No, he's a little prim and proper. Yeah. He's like sitting up straight. That's not what I want from Pete Davidson. I do, I, w- I want something other than what Pete Davidson normally is. So I, I like this. I like that. I like Peter Davidson. Okay. And I like uh, Sarah, who's his uh, Rhonda. Rhonda. Yeah. Rhonda. Yeah. Come on, Rhonda. You're my co-host. Yeah. I like that. Is this on TV? I don't that know. That part's kind That's of. That's a very yeah. good uh, commentary on modern content. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know what FanDuel TV. Like is FanDuel TV a channel? I don't know. I've never I, heard of that before. You you haven't? No. That's right. You don't uh you don't follow any of like the, uh, the like the the K Adams stuff or anything? No. Yeah, like a lot of my for you is peep is not not K Adams, who I don't know. I don't uh, and I, this is no commentary on her. In my for you section is like I, I see K Adams simps. I see, I see, I see like, Kay Adams Sims where like, they like, post like pictures of her and something like, like oh, quote oh, tweeting like a video of like a, a bottle spilling or something. And like, oh my God, Kay Adams. I'm like, what is this universe? What is it? But I know that that's all like FanDuel TV okay. stuff. All right. FanDuel TV, sponsor the pod, will ya? <laughs> um, yeah, Ted Lasso, bad. Yeah, uh, but 
I forget who. Oh, I was talking to my mom about this because I was explaining to her. She was like, wait, so why is everyone so mad at Ted Lasso? And I told her this. And I was like, and then Sam. So the, there's the the fapping, and, and then the shut up and dribble. And there, oh my god, dude, fuck off, not just to brag. The subtlety of a fucking Mack truck through your living room. But they're discussing whose fault is it that all these nudes have leaked, and one of the oh characters, who I I knew there was going to be something with Jack. I knew there was going to be something. Did you watch that episode? Jack, who's Jack? Uh, Keel, uh make it spoilers. Kaylee's girlfriend. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. I I knew that that, that like. Jack had some. Uh, You're waiting like, for the bottom to fall. Roman out there. Roy to her, where it's like, there's she's a little shit somehow. What's well, it gonna kn- be? Well, you knew the bottom was gonna fall out there because like you because you know that Keely and Roy they're are gonna, gonna find end up it. back together. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, there there's like a witch hunt and who who is to blame when these nudes get leaked and somebody says, well, you shouldn't take nudes if you don't want them leaked. And then Jamie says, no, it's the person who's going into the cloud and stealing them. And then Sam says, which before I start this, fuck off, Sam, with this whole thing. He says, uh, at the end of every relationship, uh, I exchange phones with the person and tell them to delete whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Which, like, obviously, that sounds fucking great. But... That's not how that what works. What percentage of breakups, and I'm not just talking about myself, like what percentage of breakups are like, all right, so this is officially, officially over. It's right, really like, done what, now. Do you have an exit Phone interview? time. <laughs> yeah. And then you meet up and you give each other yeah. your phones? No, like that's not how that shit works. And also just like- being a respectful adult and do the fucking right thing. And and, uh, and he's like, he throws in the line about Candy Crush. One time she deleted my Candy Crush. I was upset, but I got it. And I was like, what the fuck? What? This is this show is for four-year-olds, but they like swear and they have sex scenes. Like, the, I don't know who the show is for anymore. Also, as soon as that that scene brought up, like with the guys talking in the locker room, one of them fucking brings up copyright law when it comes to photography. I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? It's it is it was awful. And then the the shut up and dribble thing. It's just like. It feels like they've gone back in like the last six years of discourse on Twitter and they're like, hey, remember when this was being debated on Twitter? Let's make this ep- an episode. And who the fuck wants that? They're about to hit us with the uh, crying Zava meme. <laughs> yes. And how it affects him mentally. It's going like, to be, uh, what's it going to be? They're going to do, uh, uh, what's the, the football is life guy? Uh, yeah. Um, shoot. Dan what's his name? Or something? Danny? Danny Rojas. Yeah. Danny Rojas, like, and I took that personally. <laughs> They're going to get into all that stuff. Yeah, the show is bad, man, and it stinks. I, it, it did get me watching it again, though, because I was, like, three behind, and I just wanted to see how bad is this. I need to see this scene in context. I'm going to see it through, and I'm still interested in it. I'm just, like, really disappointed with what it's become, and I think that they're really spreading themselves too thin, especially in the last season, where mm-hmm. there are so many characters that they think that you care about now, and I don't. Yeah, I don't like it's it's spreads itself way too thin and it's just it's become a, a kind of like a caricature of itself and it's lost its humanity a little bit. I brought up uh, I brought up James Morrison earlier. Have you watched Jury, jury Duty? Yet? I have not, but I've seen like a lot of Jury Duty, jury duty discourse and people are loving it. And I, I flew through that shit. And I'll be honest, like I probably fell asleep a couple of times during it. It's one of those things where you don't need to pay full attention to it. You don't need to see the whole thing. How much but of it's it is sweet and it's cute? Okay, how much of it is like cringe comedy? Because that's what I thought it was. Not a lot. There's one thing where they're in a hotel room and James Marsden's like, "Hey, uh, just a heads up, somebody took a huge dump in that toilet." So they call up somebody and he's like, before the guy gets there, he's like, "I'm sorry, man." It was me. Can you tell that guy that you took the dump? So like that sort of stuff. That's, I got that's no time not for. no like that's that's whatever. Like I thought it was kind of uh, in the vein of the rehearsal, which oh, I could no, I, which I could not do more than like two minutes. The of. rehearsal was bad, and this is pretty good. Okay, uh, this it, it makes you. It, I mean, it makes you love this kid who they throw a lot of things at him, like ridiculous characters. But the kid's such a nice guy. So I've seen interviews with a kid, and I've been like, a kid, a guy, the yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he seems great. Yeah. Even talking about it. There's one character, there's one juror who 
uh, like his deal is that he's super into these like technological advancements. Like he wears like the pant chairs and stuff. Okay. They uh, they go to dinner one time and he's got the stuff in his mouth and they're like, "What's that?" And he's like, "Oh, it's this thing. Like sharks have like teeth in the back of their mouth, so this is a device to like it helps you eat more like a shark." And this guy is so like. Hey man, that's sweet. Yeah, like, like if, if you like it, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, for you. like tell me about it. And like <laughs> obviously cool. is like this is fucking weird, and I'm not going to do this. But he's like, hey, I hope that you don't feel like you're a fucking outsider because of this. He's not yucking anybody's yum. They give him uh, money at the end too. Oh, cool. Good. Which not a ton of money, but they give him some money. I mean, it's some money is better than no money. Speaking yeah. of which, if mm-hmm. you haven't already, uh, you should start a Squarespace website yeah. because Squarespace absolutely rocks uh we've we've used squarespace to build a a project that that we're working on and let me tell you what it's super easy uh you can create a beautiful website that uh, helps you engage with your audience gives you plenty of plenty of tools that makes it easy and it's beautiful and and wonderful you know what's a website that helps you engage with your audience the knot the knot oh like the wedding website it's what's engaged people uh, uh, make it for their audience. That's a good joke. Squarespace has uh, plenty of tools. If you are a content creator, like if you're trying to push your content, they've got a video studio. They've got email campaigns. They've got beautiful analytic dashboards, connected social media accounts, all that fun stuff that gives you powerful tools to kind of monitor who's consuming your content, how, uh, how you can... F- better push it, and uh, how you can present it to them in the best way possible. If you want to start your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com slash brunch for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use offer code brunch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that, again, is squarespace.com slash brunch for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, use promo code brunch. You'll save 10% off the website or the domain. We got to talk about the couple that's got everybody shaking, rattling, and rolling. As I go to do this, though, Taylor Swift has a blue check mark. She pays for Twitter. I think she pays for Twitter. She probably doesn't. She's probably one of the ones. Her that dad Elon pays gifted. for Twitter. <laughs> yeah, she correct. probably she probably went around trying to get signed by Twitter, and then Twitter was like no, and her dad invested millions of dollars and moved the branch of his company to nashville and now she has the blue check mark, check mark. so don't worry in a little while she's gonna be really mad that like how come i don't get to have this how come the check mark isn't free for me and they're like you could have bought the check mark that's true and, and then, then she rebuilds a check mark and then sells she's gonna uh, make her own blue and check then mark. sends sells prints of that check mark physical prints to her fans and her poor fans think like yeah we're showing them when it's the you the joke is on you you poor people man uh look this is how i feel about the maddie healy taylor swift thing Mm -hmm. because i got some ooh, this must be your worst nightmare and i said yes a conversation about taylor swift related anything is my worst nightmare but this couple I don't. I normally don't care about celebrity couples anyway, so whatever. Do what you're going to do. I would just like to clarify, and maybe this is a new... I want to clarify because I realized it myself recently. I don't think Taylor Swift is insufferable. Maddie Healy, obviously, <laughs> on paper, scientifically, and it, like, love Maddie Healy. But, like, so, like, the Matt, Maddie Healy is insufferable, but in, like, the way that I want him to be. Like, yeah, like I want him to be... Like insufferable like old school in the Father way John Misty. exactly that's like, what I was, the compare very cop online that I was make. Yeah. very like the, the the court jester yes but also like put doing the work and like I think that Matty Healy is self aware enough to know that he's like kind of too online and too problematic <laughs> and he kind of takes the piss out of it a mm-hmm. little bit and I want that from Matty Healy yeah so no problems there. We know what Maddie Healy is. Him plus whatever, I'm sure could be a noisy couple if they choose to do that. I mean, whoever Maddie Healy ends up with is it's going to be noisy and it's going to be obnoxious. Right. It's the uh, Tom Haverford thing. I'm cute with everybody. Yeah. Sort right. of thing. Yeah. Uh, now on Taylor Swift, she's not insufferable, and 
I have my thing about if as long as you're not an asshole, I don't care if you're annoying because I think that we're all certainly uh, annoying. I'm annoying. All my friends are annoying. Whatever. I don't think that Taylor Swift is annoying though, and I don't think that she is. I don't think that she's super obnoxious. I think that everything about her that makes me roll my eyes is also extremely understandable given her life. Like she's obviously been given a lot and she's accomplished a lot. And I think that she definitely reads her press clippings. And when you have a lot of people, smart people who know better kind of in on selling this idea that you're a genius, you're going to believe that you're a genius. And that's like, I don't think that's Taylor Swift's fault. I don't hold much of any of the Taylor Swift stuff against Taylor Swift. I think the conversation about her is definitely insufferable, but you're, you're, she, her, you're, she's fine. Your power rankings of like Taylor Swift problems, like number one by a mile is Taylor Swift fandom. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and so that's like, that's where I think that this couple is insufferable, or at least like from from a me perspective, is my, my biggest thing is that I don't want Swifties invading my 1975 fandom. Oh. That's where my issue is because like, in if this if this sticks in like four or five months, I'm not going to be able to say anything negative about the 1975, or like I'm not going to be able to go to 1975 shows. Oh my god, I just thought of such a good fucking idea. Oh no, we should go full police station or hospital. Now I'm going to put here. I'll pause, and it can give the definition. Police station or hospital is uh, the people who dig into Taylor Swift tweets and song lyrics and say, oh, this means this and one, three and 13. And I'm one man with three kids. So 13, blah, 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 blah. Like, that's, you got, you got to go to either a police station or a hospital and you get to choose, but you have to go to one. We've discussed this, but if the, you're new and hearing this. pegboard Swifties. Right. We got to start doing that with 1975 stuff to be like, this was always happening. Part of the band. She knows Phoebe Bridgers, who's in a band. And blah, 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 blah. Ooh. Oh, damn. No, I'm bad at math. I was just about to. 19, 7, 1 plus 9 plus 7 plus 5 equals 13. Yeah. <laughs> we should do that anyway. I know. Oh, fuck. Man. <laughs> damn. Do we take a break? And <laughs> one, one off. Do we take a break and script a uh, conversation so we could cut it into being like, this relationship was always happening? And yeah, like, for sure. One plus nine. All right. Uh, should we t- uh, take a break and figure this out? Yeah, let's All do right, it. All right. Be right back. Love you. I think it's insane that everybody's so surprised that Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy are dating. The signs were right in front of us the entire time. Maddie Healy's name starts with an M, 13th letter of the alphabet. 13 times A, 1 equals 13. TT, hindsight's 2020. I knew you were trouble. Why? I think he knows. Are you f-ing kidding me? H, 8th letter of the alphabet plus E, 5th letter of the alphabet equals 13. A1 plus L12 equals 13. She was telling us. I. Why 25 minus L12 equals 13. <laughs> Maddie Healy, member of the 1975. 1 minus 9 equals negative 8. Plus 7 equals negative 1. Plus 5 equals 4, which is 1 plus 3. 13. Holy. Matt starts with an M. 13. Ends with a T. 20 equals 3, 3. When nobody would sign Taylor Swift, her dad bought a 3% stake in Big Machine for $300,000. This bitch. 1 plus 9 plus 7 plus 5 is 22. And she's feeling 22. We don't know how that looks, but... uh, I'm glad we did it. We just did the taping of it, Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what, it was a fun little project. I immediately just took the alphabet (laughs) and put the corresponding letters next to it. Let me tell you what. It took about, I hope you could tell from watching that, one minute (laughs) to put that all together. You can turn any number into 13. You sure can, and we should have guessed that because a bunch of 13-year-olds have been doing that for 10 years at this point and always finding a way back to where they want to land. I'm going to be so distracted 
anything that we discuss the rest of the way, be like, how can I turn that into Taylor Swift? You are literally I going can. to trick yourself into becoming like a tw- Swifty conspiracy theorist. Yeah, I'm going to see tweets the like, like, that doesn't even make sense because 12 plus 13 <laughs> yes. equals 25 and 25 minus 12, which is L. You better take an L if you want to get back to the 13 that you want, which is M. You're just going to be going about your day and you're going to be just like seeing 13s everywhere. While we're on the topic of musicians that maybe we don't love. Uh, uh Ed Sheeran just put out a new album and I was thinking about it. He's singing out loud now. Ooh, Do you know this? Yeah, yeah. Do you know this? Yeah, he was he's thinking. recording out loud. He was thinking out loud and now he's singing out loud. He's suggesting that maybe you change it to uh, Hey Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody loves a yesterday. yesterday joke like you. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, I, I truly do. I've I been, know you. I've did. never said it before. I love that movie. It's so bad. I re I googled that clip the other day, the John Lennon one, just to look at the comments. Oh like, my oh, god, that's so what John would do. Oh my god, I hate it so much. Uh, we've had these discussions individually. But I want to pose this question to you. Who has had the more disappointing career based on your expectations? Ed Sheeran or Lord? Lord. Lord, by far. Lord is a great artist who has done not great work. Lord is... I think you could say the same about Ed Sheeran. You know when Paul Correa signed with the Avalanche? Him and Timu Solani were yes, just like, you know yeah. what, let's just go to the Avalanche and do like one-year deals yeah. and we'll try to win and maybe we'll win and just like whatever. And like they were never heard from again. <laughs> That's kind of what Lord has done, except Paul Korea and Timu Solani did it at the end of amazing careers. Right, like they were already in the Hall of Fame. This would be like if after winning Rookie of the Year, uh, I don't know, Stu Skinner. Was like, I want to go to... Barely a rookie. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me He's started. 40 years old. But uh, I, I hope that hockey reference wasn't lost on people. But it would be like if... Lord made one amazing album and was destined for greatness. I had extremely high At hopes like for At like 16 her. years old. Right. As... God, I... Michael Scott voice. I couldn't... I didn't even know how to talk when I was 16. Yeah. And she then did really, really piss poor work. So definitely Lord. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I think it's an interesting question because, uh, like, Ed Sheeran has disappointed me immensely because I remember a conversation that we had in the early stages of brunch where we were like, okay, Ed Sheeran is fulfilling his obligations to the record label where he's making mm-hmm. music that he knows will be palatable. But, like, Ed Sheeran is a cool as fuck dude, and I'm sure that he is just, like, waiting for his opportunity to build up enough goodwill to do whatever he wants, and he's going to do some awesome shit. Like, he's going to kind of follow the John Mayer fold where he's like, I'm no longer making pop music. I'm making the music that I want to make. Maybe that hasn't aged super well because I think John Mayer has kind of gone back to making sort of pop music. But, like, for for all intents and purposes, John Mayer was, like, a while ago, stopped making stuff for the radio. Yeah. And Ed Sheeran is still absolutely making stuff for the radio. And I just always expected him to get to a point where he was like, you know what? I'm done making shit for you guys. I'm going to make shit for me. And I expected him to branch out a little bit more. And he's still doing the same fucking shit that he was six, seven years ago. I think part of it is people's appetites have changed. I think like one of, and I don't know this, but when I hear, uh, some Ed Sheeran stuff, it sounds like like maybe like Blackstreet is a big influence on him. And I think that maybe if he were doing stuff his way, he'd go and make like early 90s sounding R&B stuff. Yeah. A, that market's already covered by Bruno Mars. I don't know if really there's an appetite for like, uh, is he Irish? He's Irish, yeah. Like a redheaded Irish kid doing that right now? Are there, I think that there's... You, Maybe you, it's you, just you, a you, guess. you cannot you cannot like anticipate the appetite for things because right. I think I think a lot of the time when you if you were to be in a room and you were to be like I don't know if there would be an appetite for a redheaded Irish kid to do this kind of stuff the novelty of him doing that I think creates the appetite or it doesn't create the appetite but like it becomes so weird that people latch onto it 
Yeah, but I, I, I think that people would just be like, I, don't I even know, like, re- I, I even I, remember when like Ed, Ed Sheeran is a huge hip hop guy, right? And like when that started to come out more, when he would do like, um, when he did like the the Fetty Wap yeah. uh, cover, people were like, oh shit, this is weird, this is different. Like I would never expect this. People eat that shit up. Ed Sheeran, release your, uh, release your reputation album. And by the way, well, yes, it, yeah, yeah, that's quit, a great way to put it. Quit doing the fucking multiplication signs and everything. He is. He's done now. We don't know what they mean. He's done now. This Stop. this la- this latest one is the conclusion of the whatever like arithmetic. Do fucking you know why? Series. Yeah, because nobody wants it anymore. No, because <laughs> if you add up all of those signs, it equals thirteen. That's right. Oh shit. No, like I, I guarantee whatever Ed Sheeran has like thrown away is probably infinitely more interesting than the stuff that he's put out. Maybe, but he's all, I mean, the stuff he puts out is pretty simple, but fun and nice. Uh, I am happy for him that he won. Not for him. I'm, I'm kind of out on it, Sharon, or I just don't care as much about him. That's the thing. But it's good that he, yeah, right. Oh, no. Like, that's, that's why I'm so disappointed. He's an he afterthought. Was, he was so, he was so interesting. And like, he seems like a cool guy to like hang out with, have a few beers with, but like. Pints. Maybe pints, even. that's right. Yeah. But like now it's just like, he's fucking boring yeah it's just like there's nothing interesting about ed sheeran anymore that bad habit song man that 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 was where i was like okay i'm uh i might be taking the exit on (laughs) yeah mr mr ed boy i'm still i'm still uh i'm still i'm not out on ed sheeran like i'm not selling all of my stock yeah but it i'm i'm sort of like forgetting about this the the few shares that i do have yeah you know like i'm i'm kind of i'm keeping them for just in case I was doing some uh, fanfic with uh, a friend and Taylor Swift stan discussing what a Maddie Healy Taylor Swift wedding would look like. And I said I'd be bummed when I realized that the Heim sisters were her bridesmaids because I'd be like, man, she doesn't really have any like real friends, huh? <laughs> and then I'd be like, ooh, Ed Sheeran's over there playing the cocktail hour. Yeah. And I'd be distracted. Do you think uh, Do you think Jack Antonoff would be in Taylor Swift's bridal party? I think so, he would be. This conversation was with Nora. And she said Obviously. that uh, Jack Antonoff, uh, I think she said Jack Antonoff officiates. And yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Big time. Yeah, because he is a mutual connection of, of them That two. is right. Yeah. Right. He did I think the, he would be uh, a perfect, uh, perfect candidate to officiate. Yeah. Um, I, now I'm curious now, um, because it did come out after, uh, Midnight's was released that she worked with the 1975 on a couple songs for that album and they got left on the cutting room floor. Now I'm curious to see like why and how those, how that conversation went. I <laughs> like could... if you have like a, a, that kind of, that tight of a relationship, like that's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. I don't know. I mean, if I were making an album with Taylor Swift and she presented a bunch of songs, I'd be like, all right, 80% of these, and at my standards, I'm a fucking nobody. I'm not putting out a fucking bunch of 1564 songs, so take all those ones. I know you spent a, a tidy half hour on them, I'm not counting those ones. Which ones do we have left over? So maybe it's that. Maybe they're just like, these aren't the type of songs that we would do. Because I, I do think that bands do have... Uh, for lack of a better term, some level of like standard of mm-hmm. like, these are the things we do and these are the things that we don't do. Yeah. Not like the things, not like we have to stay inside these uh, walls, but certain things are Just too like, cheap for us. Yeah, not our thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I could or see like we're that. above this. Yeah. I, I, I remember the quote being like, Matty Healy being like, yeah, it didn't get included on the album. I don't know why. So that's was like, We're all was looking like, for the guy who makes decisions for the <laughs> 1975. What? I'm saying, like, I don't know why. It's like, well, who should we ask? Well, no, uh, he's saying he didn't know why they weren't included on Taylor's album. Oh, these were for Taylor's yes, album. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I thought you were saying that Taylor did some writing for the 1975, no. and I was like, oh, I'd be like, these no, aren't no, good no, enough. No, 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 1975 worked on Midnight's, is what ah. I was saying, and they did songs together. And... Are you saying that Taylor Swift, you, no, I'm not going to go there, but. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, he had said, you know. We worked on songs. I don't know why they were left off the album. Thought they were pretty good. Man. So I did see, uh, I got like a police station or hospital thing spammed at me. And it was like Taylor Swift talking about Midnight in 2019. And it was, uh, she's like, this is, uh, this song is off my upcoming album. Uh, It's called Lover. And everyone cheered. 
And they were like, she knew about Midnight's. And I was like, I think she just she was had probably some, going to she put like it. misspoke or like yeah. I don't know, just chunked it. Okay, very cool. She always knows though. She does. She's not her fault. You so she didn't say I talked about midnights in 2019. You weirdos did. <laughs> so cut it out. Uh in the uh news of spammed Instagram algorithm stuff. Uh, what do you think of all those uh, Mickey Mouse videos I've been sending you? Yeah. I, I sent you like 400 in a row. Yeah. And they're the same, uh, the exact same for every single one of them. So I'm except the last one uh, where, it, so the, the, uh, the formula is it's a side by side, somebody cooking something and then somebody fucking up the cooking process and it's Mickey Mouse narrating it uh, with like a, a Mickey Mouse puppet on the other side. And he's like, you're not supposed to do what are you doing why are you doing this why are you doing Stop this it. <laughs> it's, it's, so funny. it's incredible <laughs> but it's the same fucking thing every time except one of them it goes the reverse direction oh he, the shoes yeah yeah it's like, look at those what, nice what white shoes what are you don't doing do that. Oh, don't, don't make the shoes dirty and then <laughs> the shoes are clean again He's, don't make the oh they're clean again <laughs> That's really, I know that that, those had to be made, and this is where like Instagram gets a little weird. There's no way the person who's making those is like older than 15 years old, <laughs> right? Yeah, they probably are. You think that so? Could, that could be somebody, no, like that is, I would be willing to guarantee that person's in their 30s. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so I watch, I'm like, this is definitely being made by a child, <laughs> and I am viewing it as, like, the height of comedy. No, it's, it's somebody who is exactly like you, who's, like, in their 30s, just probably too online, yeah. and just, like, this is the funniest shit ever. Oh, my God. The one, there's one where uh, the, the first one I saw was a guy slicing pizza, and he's like, <laughs> oh, boy, but they keep slicing. I'd so like a like, nice slice. <laughs> I'd like a slice of that pizza. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. That's too many. <laughs> they keep slices. <laughs> they Stop keep cutting it. it. <laughs> they keep making the slices smaller and smaller. Stop <laughs> it. Stop cutting. <laughs> so we've learned uh, what Pete thinks of it. He thinks it's really funny too. <laughs> I mean, I I will say it's a thousand times funnier to talk about it than it is to watch it. <laughs> I, I want you to start making those videos for like Leon Dreisaitl goals and be yeah. like, like Leon Dreisaitl is scoring a goal. <laughs> He's scoring another goal. Yeah, that's too many goals. I was Stop thinking, scoring goals. I was thinking about that for the hockey thing that uh, we're doing. Uh, we have to have some little bit that can be done and like copied and pasted across a bunch of stuff. Like I, I don't know if I sent you this video. Uh, it was from the uh, Battle of uh, Alberta. Did you see the video? Did I send it to you? I can't uh, remember. I sent I it to remember. some of my other hockey buds, and uh, it's two guys, uh, like lip syncing the commentary. Oh, I sent I sent that to you. You sent it to really? Yeah, and I the, sent that to you, and you didn't respond. Really? And now I'm finding out that you turned oh. around and sent it to all your buddies. Oh yeah, wait, and then the other guys in the background. Yeah, like, like yeah, this. it's so good, and like it is the perfect lip sync I've ever the most perfect lip sync I've ever seen. They definitely like made a script and overlaid it on the thing and was yeah. reading it off. But yeah. it's so yeah, we're gonna think of some stuff to do. I mean, in the meantime. Probably more Taylor Swift, nineteen seventy five arithmetic videos. It all comes back to thirteen. Baby. It all comes back, and you know who wears number thirteen? Leon Dreisaitl. That's right. Well, thirteen plus sixteen, which is sixteen. Thir which is thirteen plus three, which is the average of goals he scored in a game this series. That actually could be true. Yeah. Whatever. We'll we'll look it up. Fucking A, man. Uh, you didn't see Bo is Afraid. I did not. Yo, I saw I that shit, to. and it is bonkericious. It is crazy. Yeah, and like, I have, and like, that's off of uh, Ari Aster's, the standard that he Ari. set. Ari Aster. Ari. Uh, <laughs> Ari Potter. So I have, a, I have a friend whose wife's name is Ari. Ah. And I always say Ari, mm. and I always get corrected. So, like, Ari, Ari always will trip me up. Are you scarred she's going to get mad? That's right. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Ari, Ari Aster? 
Harry Potter, Ari Aster. Ari, As- Ari Aster. Mm-hmm. Alabaster. Yeah. Um, He's white, famously. <laughs> is alabaster a, a white color? It's like a white... Uh, Eggshell? It's like a white... Uh, shit. Wow. It's like, I was going to say stone, but it's not really a stone. It's like a... Something like that. Go on. Um, yeah. Ari. Ari Aster has sent a very weird uh, standard for himself. And... So, like, the fact that people are coming away from that being, like, that movie was so fucking weird. It's his weirdest. I have no idea what to expect. Yeah, and uh, I was discussing this online with a friend of the podcast, Jim Lyons, because he hadn't seen it yet, saw that I was gushing about it, and he was like, oh, good. I'm, like, I love his other stuff. And I said, I want him to just take huge swings, and I'm totally, it's my, my thing with Taylor Swift, do reputation, take swings, and if you miss, and Ed I'm happy, yeah. If you miss, I'm happy that you took the swing. Don't stay in your safe little bubble all your right. life. Is this a perfect movie? Definitely not. Is Are there parts of it where you're like, I don't get this and I'm going to pretend I did? Yes, absolutely. Any multiverse shit? No. Okay. But that's fucking okay. Like I, I want a good Ari Aster movie to me is a lot of shit that tickles my fancy but also some shit that I don't get. Some stuff that I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to see that a couple more times. Well, that I mean, like the be fucking weird. Famously, the best picture winner this past year. Yes, I it you at some point you just have to allow it to take you for the ride. You don't have to understand every part of it. That's been that was my experience with Everywhere All at Once. Every time that yeah. I watched it, I was like, listen, I'm gonna get confused halfway through this movie, but it doesn't fucking matter because I'm enjoying the ride. Did I? Uh shit i'm thinking of the mickey mouse thing again uh did i uh tell you that i thought that this was like basically trying to uh outgun everything everywhere all at once for the most a24 movie ever no i said that to somebody it, it really is it's like th- this a24 obviously is on a run these last five or six years but now it's getting to the point where these movies are trying to see like how fucking insane can we be well i mean i i feel like uh, it's now become yeah like it's a competition to see like how how crazy you can be but i also think it's probably a product of i think people are now trying to make a24 movies oh yeah for like, sure a24 was the company that was just like okay we'll pick up the weird projects yep. that other people won't and now i think people are writing to be like this is going to be an a24 movie what's the uh one is it uh neon yeah that's the like the the biggest competitor Right, where they're like trying to pass become a twenty four off. Well, like they're not trying to pass themselves off; they're doing a really good job as, in their own right. I think Parasite was a neon movie. Oh, was it? Yeah, I know that it wasn't a. It wasn't a twenty four. Yeah, uh, the uh, BlackBerry movie comes out this week. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. And uh, Air hits uh, streaming on ooh, Friday. Ooh, perfect streaming movie! Definitely go watch. Yes, Air. the most streamable movie. Yeah. Uh, Blackberry, I'm very excited about because uh, number one, it just looks good, and number two, uh, stars our good friend Jay Baruchel. Yeah, who hopefully we'll get him back on the podcast. Yeah, he did tomato fights for us. We had like the best conversation of our lives. He's the fucking coolest guy. Seth Rogen's favorite podcast he's ever seen or listened to. That's right. Um, so. Hopefully that'll be the case, but either way, going to see BlackBerry, and it looks awesome. Very excited about it. And uh, uh, what's his what's his name? Always Sunny Guy? Uh, that's uh, uh, Rob McElhinney. Yes, correct. Yeah, he's buying he's the He's buying Ottawa the Senators, senators. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same exact joke. Good. Um, yes, uh, Glenn uh, Close is <laughs> in this one. So it's not going to win any awards. <laughs> 